Hello and welcome to TD Design and Build. In this quick five minute tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design a visual grid for your spoil board using Fusion 360. We will then generate a toolpath and see how it works on the Onefinity CNC machine. So let's get to it. I'm going to make this as quick and painless as possible and get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is go into sketch or create sketch, choose the top from the three dimensional block, click in the XY plane and then in create in the drop down menu, you're going to select center rectangle. Click on the center of the screen and just type in 800, press tab and type in 800 again. Zoom out and that is an 800 by 800 spoil board. I tend to use an 800 by 800 spoil board because of the soft limits of the machine. You can go 816 by 816 and be right on the limit. But sometimes you find you have trouble with uh, the entry and exit paths of the tool so I, I go a little bit smaller. I'm happy with simplifying things and keeping it as 800 by 800. So click on the extrude tool, type in 18 millimeters or three quarters if you're in America. Click on OK. There, that's extruded. Now you have a three dimensional representation of an 800 by 800 spoil board. Now we're going to click on sketch and click on the top plane of our 3D spoil board. The next thing you're going to do is draw a line 50 millimeters from the edge. Now it doesn't have to be 50 millimeters. It can be any incremental spacing that you choose it to be. So if you are using Imperial 32 inches, then you might want to make your squares two inches. It's totally up to you, but you have to make sure it's divisible by the number so that they're equally spaced. Uh, I go 50 millimeters because an 800 board, that gives me 16 squares across and 16 squares up. So the first thing I draw is draw a 50 millimeter line going in. And then from that line, I go straight up the board and do a complete line. And the same again, 50 millimeters up and a line. Then I'm gonna delete that first marker line. And as you can see, all I've done is put one line going horizontally and one line going vertically and they both start 50 millimeters from the edge. The first thing you're going to do is click on manufacture from the top left tab. This opens the toolpath generating program. You're then going to click on setup, which is next to manufacture in the top left. It brings up a tab, which will have lots of options in. And the first thing you want to do is select the machine. You should, if you're using Fusion 360, have already entered in the parameters of your machine. So you, you click on this, select it, go to stock. Now you want all your stock numbers to be at zero. Uh, you haven't got any extra stock on it. You've just got an 18 millimeter MDF spoil board. You want your home position or box point or stock box point or where your axis or probing position starts to be the bottom left of the board. Close that window and then go under 2D, scroll down to 2D contour. Click that option. It brings up a dialog box which has several options. The first one is to select the tool. If you haven't already got a 60 degree cutter in your tool box, you can generate one using this tool here. So you just press the plus icon and type in all the parameters for that tool. Once you've done that, you go back to the dialog box, you can change your spindle speed to 1800, and then you're going to select the line. So you go to the second tab in the dialog box on geometry, 
and you click the line, it selects the line, and you go down to chamfer and you can type in one millimeter for the width of the chamfer. Now, this is something I actually got wrong here. You might want to try 0.5. You might really, really, you want to engrave a very, very thin line across the spoil board. They're only optical markings. So by putting one, I believe that the tool cuts out two millimeters because it's cutting both sides of a chamfer. So it, it doubles it. So I went a bit deep. Once you've done that, you want to get rid of your lead in entry points and lead out exit points by clicking this tick box, which removes those. All that that does is stop the tool path from going outside of that 800 millimeter square. Click OK, and that generates one tool path to cut that one single line. You can quickly do a simulation to check. As you can see, there's the tool cutting that one single line, and that's fine. So now we're going to generate the horizontal line. That's the vertical line that we've done. 2D contour. Geometry. Click on that line. Click on passes. Select 0.5, although I'm pressing one millimeter there, but lesson learned, remember. Uh, get rid of the lead in and lead out. Click OK, and that's both the horizontal and vertical lines generated. Now what we're going to do is right click on the tool path, go down to add new pattern, select the direction, select the spacing, which is 50 millimeters, and the amount of lines is going to be 15. And you'll notice it will draw those lines and then you clip, click flip direction. Select 15, click OK. And there you have all of the vertical or horizontal lines are now drawn. So same again, right click on linear pattern two. Click 50 for the spacing, number 15 or number of instances is 15. Click on the direction and then click OK. And as you can see, it has now drawn a grid. OK, now we've programmed in those two repeat patterns. That should be the grid. But what we need to do is check it by running a simulation. So we quickly run the simulation, check the program, see that it's working and then move on to the next step. The next thing to do is to click on G code post processor, type in the name of your code. I'm typing 800 by 800 grid here, and I'm just going to save that onto my USB stick, take it down and try that out on the machine. Okay, so that's the quick and dirty way of doing a grid using Fusion 360. I hope you enjoyed the video. Just remember if you do do it, set the chamfer to as minimal a width as possible. One millimeter is too big, 0.25 might even be too big. So do a test cut first to get the correct size. But uh, I hope that's helpful to you. And I hope now that some of you will find it a lot easier to use Fusion 360 to generate a grid toolpath. And that's the end of the video. See you soon.